here's a kind of solid mechanics question which on one hand is somewhat easier than what we've been looking at in the last couple of weeks with bending moments and shear forces uh, and instead we're gonna look at finding just reactions so those could be either reactive forces or reactive moments but in this particular problem we're just looking at the horizontal or vertical reaction forces at point A as well as C. So uh, A is a simple support and C is uh, just a joint which is connected to our beam as well as to uh, that bar CD. Okay, so again, this is the kind of question that you might see in your first couple of lectures in your first year solid mechanics module, which is something that you do as a first year engineering student, whether you're studying aerospace or civil engineering or mechanical um, and so on. So if you'd like to see anything similar to this on the channel, let me know in the comments. So as with everything that we've been doing so far in mechanics, the first thing that I would do is just draw a free body diagram for this. So free body, the first free body diagram that I'm going to draw, and as you'll notice, we'll probably have to do this a few times. Uh, so the first free body diagram is going to be that for the beam. So we have point A here, we have point B here, and at the center we have point C. So I'm just going to draw the free body diagram of the beam, meaning that I'll just draw the forces acting on uh, the beam. So we have 4 kilonewtons. And then we have the reaction at A. So this one is in the form of a horizontal reaction force. So we have RAX and then we have RAY, right? And then at point C, we have something similar going on as well. So we have, let's call this RCX and we have RCY as well. Now, I don't actually know if the green arrows are pointing up or to the right, but that's my sign convention. So I'm assuming everything uh, to the right being positive. I'm assuming everything going up to be positive as well. And I'm assuming the reaction force is to be positive, but it may not actually be the case, but that's fine. So let's first look at finding the sum of forces in, at writing down the sum of forces in the x direction. So again, uh, right is positive, which means that we have RAX plus RCX uh, equal to zero, right? And that means RCX is going to be equal to minus RAX, like this. So that's the first thing we have, because, and you know, RAX and RCX are the only two horizontal forces that appear, which means that the sum of the two of them have, has to be equal to zero. And what this means is that they have the same value, but they're uh, acting in opposite directions. So now in terms of the force in the y direction, uh, here we have uh, three forces. So we have RAY, uh, and then we have plus RCY, and then we have minus four equals zero. So that gives us RAY, plus RCY equals to four. So we've got those um, Y forces adding up and the sum is equal to four. So as you can probably notice, we are trying to find out four different unknowns. And so far we have two equations. So if we have uh, four unknowns, we need four equations usually. So a third equation would be related to the moments. So if we take moments about a point, so for example, I'm gonna take moments about point A, but you can take moments about anywhere because if we're dealing with equilibrium, the sum of moments about, in this case, point A, or the sum of moments about any point, if there's equilibrium, is equal to zero. So the sum of moments about point A is equal to zero, and I'm taking, this means, as usual, counterclockwise is positive. So uh, let's see what we have. We have about point A, we've got moments due to two forces. Okay, so RAX and RAY don't produce moments because they pass through point A. 
RCX also doesn't produce a moment because its line of action passes through point A, but RCY does produce a moment and it produces, according to the diagram, a counterclockwise moment. So that's going to be, I should probably put the values of the distances as well. So this is 1.5 meters and this is also 1.5 meters. Anyway, so the moment due to RCY is RCY uh, multiplied by the moment term, which is 1.5. And then we've got the moment due to this uh, 4 kN force. So that's going to be minus because that produces a clockwise moment. So 4 times the moment arm, which is 3, equal to 0. So RCY is 12 over 1.5, which should be 8 kilonewtons. So we found RCY, so we found this, which means we can find RAY. So we have RAY plus RCY. Um, so this is equal to 4, which means that RAY is 4 minus 8, which is minus 4 kilonewtons. So that means that the reaction force at point A is 4 kilonewtons, but it's actually acting in the opposite directions, in the opposite direction to what we originally thought. So we've essentially found out this and this. So we have RCX and we have RAX to find as well. Um, so to do that, we have to look, or the way I would do it is, I would look at what happens to the whole system, including that bar CD. So I'm going to draw the free. I'm going to draw another free body diagram. Uh, this time it's going to include our beam, which looks like this, and then we have this bar, which is kind of connected here. So let's draw the bar this way. And then I'll just add all the forces that are acting. So we've got a 4 kN force at the tip of the beam, like this. Uh, we have RAX acting this way, which we still don't know. Uh, we have RAY, which is acting upwards, but now we know what RAY is. It's minus 4. So I'm going to draw uh, it like this, and this is, I'm going to label it as minus 4 kN. Now, with with RCY and RCX, I'm not actually I don't have to draw them anymore because in this particular system they're gonna work as internal forces. So they kind of cancel each other out because they're acting on the beam, but there's they're also acting on the bar C D. So because I'm drawing both the beam and the bar, there is no uh, it doesn't make sense to consider RC as an external force because it's not as an internal force. But what we do have instead is we have a new point here called D. And at point D we have two more reaction forces basically. So we've got RDX and we also have RDY, which are unknown. So as before, we're going to... Uh, approach things in a similar manner. So I'm going to say that the sum of forces in the x direction is going to be zero. Right is positive, which means Rax plus Rdx is equal to zero. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the sum of forces in the y direction is going to be zero, where upwards is positive. So in this case, we have one, two, three vertical forces. So we have minus 4, right, this is like positive minus 4 because it's acting up, uh, plus RDY, and then minus 4 is equal to 0, which means that RDY is equal to 8 kilonewtons. So we found this, so I'm going to write here this is 8 kilonewtons, and the other thing to do is to apply moments. And once we apply moments, because we just found RDY, 
Uh, now we have Rax and Rdx. So we have one equation between Rax and Rdx, which is this. And if we can get another one, that will help us solve everything. So let's say, for example, that I want to take moments about point A. Okay, so if I do that, and actually if I do that, I should also draw out the fact that the distance between those two points, between A and D, so the distance is 1.5 meters. Okay, so I'll, I'll take moments about point A, and the sum of moments has to be equal to zero. Counterclockwise is positive. And this is going to give me a second equation between Rax and Rdx, which means after this, I will know Rax, Rdx, and if I know Rax, I know Rcx, and that solves the whole question. Okay? So the sum of moments with respect to point A is equal to zero, and the moments are the following. So again, Rax and Ray don't produce any moment. Uh, Rdy also doesn't produce a moment because it's acting upwards through point A. Rdx does produce a moment, and that moment is counterclockwise. So we have plus, and we have Rdx multiplied by 1.5. Okay, and then we have minus 4 times, so I think the whole length was 3 meters, the whole beam. So we have 3 meters like this. So I have minus 4 times 3 equals 0. So Rdx, I think it should be, so we have 12 divided by 1.5. So this is 8 kilometers. So it's positive, which means the direction we, we assumed for Rdx is correct. Right, so we found Rdx, which means that Rax is equal to minus Rdx, which is minus 8 kilonewtons. And there's only one more thing to do, which is finding Rcx. So Rcx, we found it from, we, we found the equation uh, involving Rcx from the previous free body diagram. So we have Rcx is equal to minus Rax. So this is minus Rax, we got it as minus 8, so this is minus minus 8. So this is 8 kilonewtons. And that's it. So if we compile everything into one um, list, we have Rcx as 8 kilonewtons. And this is indeed acting to the right. right. So this bar here is, this CD bar is pushing the beam to the right, essentially. And then we have Rcy as 8 kilonewtons positive, and then Rax and Ray are, so Rax was minus 8 kilonewtons, and Ray, we got Ray as minus 4 kilonewtons. So those are the values, and that's the end of the question.